Good morning, folks. The earthquakes have stepped in to take the stage as the earth facing quiet sends the sun back to his seat. We've got weather woes and three can't miss articles to share today as well, so let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding a much calmer 24 hours on our star. We can still see the boiling action of the sunspots coming in to face Earth, but no more ejections. And we also have now dropped back out of sea flare range, back down to B. So let's watch that one day flurry of activity before the Earth face and quiet got a hold of them. Notice that it wasn't just some flashing, but bursts outwards as well. This was triggered when separated umbral magnetic field loops became entwined and connected with the plasma loop connection between them, and that is what triggered all the little blasts we saw yesterday. Looking to compare the two sunspot groups, the north has been quiet, and it's no surprise it remains magnetically spread like a middle school dance. Meanwhile, the southern incoming sunspots which produce the flares have been interacting, and even as they calm back down, we still see the potential for close interaction between blue and red. Let's come now to the solar wind. Stream has mostly stabilized, but for some super fast readings. They were very brief and very sparse, so we're still just riding some middle-of-the-road instability in magnetic field right now. Not a real concern. Of course, we've been waiting for the earthquake drought to end. It's been more than two months, and we had been worried about pressure buildup. Now, as a 6.6 strikes the same region that a 6.1 struck just a day earlier, I'm reminded of the three six-pointers in one week that struck this area, preceding an 8.3 back in 2013. Eyes on it. We begin our top stories today with a look inside the Earth. It is difficult to ascertain what is a hot spot, a mantle plume, and what is a subducted crustal region, but this should help to understand the deep earthquake tracking once we get our heads around it and the understanding of exactly what is happening when a deep rumble occurs. Link to the article and video is below. Up next, we're eyeing the breakup of an asteroid. I'll admit the manuscript takes some focus, but the images tell the entire story for them, and I've showed but a fraction. They've got tons of images of this breakup. Last but not least, ESA's ExoMars lander mission is narrowing down its choices for a landing zone. When you read the article, you see they're choosing areas with deep channels and canyons to see preserved geology, and beyond the implications for potential electrical findings, so their plan is to send their little robot to a sandy, dusty planet and have him go exploring giant canyons on said planet. What could possibly go wrong? Hope they put a blaster on the rover. Anyway, here's the south polar vortex shaping up nicely and also gaining that power to the inflow, very much speeding up. While up north we've broken down into three circulations with the primary peeling off into the other two, that is the death throes into the end of the northern polar vortex season. Quickly looking at the upcoming day and night in the U.S., what to say, our worry about tornadoes yesterday brought an outbreak and I can't say I'm sleeping on this central system tonight either. Eyes on it. We've got alerts in the U.K. and Ireland, plus Debbie continues dumping rain on shore in Australia. We'll have more pressure and radar forecasts followed by shots of our star to close. It's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.